Hello, and welcome to Cry Havoc Wargaming, dedicated to bringing you the uncommon. For those of you who haven't met me, my name is Ron, and today we're going to do a comparison video of a handful of World War II MDF building kits. So let's get started. So this is part two of a ongoing project I'm working on to compare a number of MDF kits together uh, to give you an idea of how they compare and how playable they are with one another. And to some degree, where's a better place to spend your, your money or your time? So uh, I have a few different kits here for the World War II period, mostly for uh, Europe, mostly for France, but there's a few exceptions. And so let's uh, go to the hobby table. I was planning on setting this up as a nice looking village and it turns out that I can't decide uh, which of one of the manufacturer's buildings I wanted to show you. So I've got way too many of those out here. Um, so what we're going to do, let's get some of these out of the way to start. I'm going to run down a couple of buildings and my opinions of them. Uh, the manufacturers we're looking at are Supreme Littleness Designs, War Bases, Sarissa, Empires of War, and an awful lot of Charlie Foxtrot. So let's get started, I think, with uh, war bases. In the last video comparison I did regarding the Wild West buildings, I mentioned war bases a little bit. This building here, their garage, is a great example of, this one's a little broken. The, the doors on this move, which I don't think was necessary, it causes it to have some hinges that are kind of unnaturally large and they're, they're also very, very fragile. So I'm probably just gonna secure these with glue. But what I wanted to mention about this building wasn't its, its, its brokenness, uh, but rather the fact that I have two of these. Uh, this one I've done up for France for uh, early war, or you could use it for Normandy too, but for early war France, it's all marked with shell uh, markers who did business in France at the time and French uh, signs and labels. Uh, and I have a suitable period gas pump that I got for it from a model railroading supply. I also have an entirely American version of this building uh, that I've done up for 1930s, 1920s and 30s gangster games. A lot of different things can be done with it. It's from one of their generic building lines, and um, a lot of their kits are very, very inexpensive. I think this one may have been one of the slightly more expensive ones, and they are usually very, very plain and very, very basic. But there's an awful lot you can do to improve them, and in this case, in fact, a lot of these buildings you're going to see here, I've done a uh, stucco finish on them. There's various how, uh, hardware shop materials I've used for that. It's not all consistent, but it's usually a stucco repair mixed with water and glue, white, just normal white glue uh, or PVA to give it a texture to make it look a little bit less like MDF. So quite a few different things you can do with this building. Now, again, as I say, it's a very simple building. Uh, I don't think any of the war bases stuff has interiors uh, for the most part. Uh, this had separate walls, though you could make it look a little interior-like with a little bit more work, particularly if you left those side doors open, you know, and you could put vehicles in there. There's all sorts of details you can use. I just brought the gas pump, but I have some other things that are really go a long way to make it more usable for different periods. And like I said, this is, a, I think, a 1930s pump based on my research. Uh, but I have, um, uh, I have even earlier pumps for the other game, and you can get later pumps. So this building is actually usable for a lot of different things um, and is very typical of an awful lot of things that War Bases makes. Uh, these other buildings here are also War Based. They're a part of a collection that was made for uh, Chain of Command, and they're... A garden shed. This isn't everything that comes with it. There's a dog house, greenhouse, a garden shed. There's a chicken coop. I think the chicken coop came with some chickens too, uh, and a wood store. Uh, these are all a little bit more detailed than the basic war bases set. Very, very inexpensive. There's two. You can buy a lot of the stuff individually, but there's also two packages where it all comes together, and it's just a little bit of scatter terrain. Scatter terrain in a in a in any war game besides providing cover for a lot of skirmish games, but it also really makes a place look more real and makes it look more lived in, which is a real advantage. And so I recommend that kind of thing to everybody highly. I'm gonna go ahead and talk about foreground really quickly just because I hardly have any here. <laughs> I realize foreground is probably the largest, most popular um, 
MDF company out there, and I actually have surprisingly little of it. I have quite a lot of uh, their fences, fences and walls, uh, which I really like. And I, I like their ruined building set, which is what this is from. But a lot of their things I don't really think that highly of. I think a lot of their, particularly their houses, have a very strange look. I'm not sure what they were trying to represent with those, and I don't see anything prototypically that really reminds me of them. I also think one of the problems with pre-painted is that, particularly with a company as popular as Foreground, that suddenly everyone around you has tables that look exactly the same as you. On the other hand, they do some really clever things. I mean, this, this building is a great example where there's all the bullet holes in it. I mean, incredible amounts of detail go into Foreground. Many of their things have opening and closing doors, I love the way they do the multi-dimensional look for a number of their buildings. In fact, when we do the 1930s building, I have their shotgun homes, which are really good examples of all the things that are good about foreground. So I, I apologize that I don't actually have more foreground to talk about. So let's go to Sarissa from there. Look around my Sarissa buildings in the back here. I have two of the most beautiful things. I actually have three of these, but uh, I didn't bring the third one. And I th I'm pretty sure this is Sarissa, but these two I know are. These are gorgeous buildings. I've always really liked the look of these. Again, they're a little architecturally odd. Uh, from my research, I, it seems to me that these buildings should have had doors here. Um, and all three that I have have the doors on the long sides, which is, seems a little odd, particularly since sometimes there's very little room between them. They're often right butted against each other. You can even get to those doors. Uh, but it's a wonderful architecture. These are a lot of fun to paint. They really look nice, and they're very indicative. Or Most of the buildings I'm going to show you are built around France or in Normandy. These buildings are very obviously Dutch. So it's really useful, particularly for that aspect, for trying to bring a possibly Belgian, but definitely Dutch look to life. I also think they're kind of small looking. Now, let me put them up against one of my Charlie Foxtrot buildings here, and, and you'll get an idea that there's just something really tiny looking about them. So I mentioned that as part of the challenges when I did the Western video, that uh, I feel like Sarissa isn't I mean, these buildings don't look like they're even meant to be the same scale. And I'm pretty sure this is also a Sarissa. Um, so you can see the challenge I have where they don't even look like they're meant to go together. The doors are sort of similar, but um, and let me give you, here's some 28 millimeter Germans um, to give you a basic idea of what they look like with people. So I think these, they're usable, but they're not as usable when you start mixing them with other buildings and other lines. Uh, they'd be perfectly reasonable with a bunch of buildings just on their own. And as I said, I do think they're absolutely gorgeous. In fact, um, I feel like I'm sometimes a little harsh on Sarissa here. Uh, I actually really like the look of an awful lot of Sarissa things. And if I was bothering to do my 1970s London table for you, you'd see that an awful lot of my 1970s London table is in fact Sarissa. But, um, for these comparatives, I didn't see much point in doing 1970s London as a comparison video. I, I don't think that many people out there are modeling 1970s London as I do for 7TV. Let's go ahead and go over to Empires of War. I don't have a whole lot of Empires of War. Empires of War is the only pre-painted uh, kits that I have out here for World War II. There's a few out there. You know, We talked about Foreground a moment ago. Uh, Black Sight Studios does some World War II pre-painted MDF. I don't have any of, I have a lot of Black Sight Studio, but I don't have any of their World War II stuff, so I can't really say anything to that. These are the Normandy, what do they call it, factory, I think uh, is how they sell it. Um, I do like, mostly I like uh, Empires of War right now. Like, same thing would be true with Sarissa, actually, and uh, to a lesser degree, even war bases, is that unfortunately at present with the combination of Brexit on the English side uh, and America pulling out of the Postal Union. Uh, right now, shipping charges betwixt uh, American and England have gotten really awkward. And, and in fact, every single supplier I'm going to be talking about here there are British and are going to end up affected by that. And MDF is heavy. So uh, those shipping rates are a real problem and it's affecting all of this. But the only thing I don't like about the MDF are the empires of war is that these roofs have just a blue MDF insert for the skylights there, whereas an actually opening with uh, window frames would have looked so nice, but it wouldn't have worked with the construction technique. So, 
so they couldn't be done. Um, here's a good example of one of the nice things. Uh, not only are they pre-painted, but they have interiors done up as well. So these are these are nice buildings, and being they assembled very very easily and quickly, uh, and they have a number of Normandy buildings. Some of them based on buildings that were actually there. So another interesting line, uh, well worth looking into with some interesting interesting pieces. Uh, now I'm going to show you my bias. I am a big fan of Charlie Foxtrot uh, miniatures. Um, I am friends with uh, the owner. Uh, I, I, perhaps on the point of fairness, should have mentioned that I've also been involved in some of the design work for some of their buildings, not any of the ones that we're going to see here. Um, the buildings I've been involved with are all North American uh, Revolutionary War buildings. I am a big fan of Charlie Foxtrot. This is his tobacconist. These have a limited interior. Uh, there are some walls. They don't have uh, this one's broken. That's supposed to be glued on there um, But all of them will come apart into separate pieces uh, They um, I think this was my own doing um, The I didn't like this design and was sure that was going to break off left and right So I went ahead and put a piece of brass wire To hold it and I think I came up with that on my own. I don't think that was part of the design I don't remember now uh, they have additional pieces that you can buy, which are these gardens. And some of the buildings have front and back as well. Um, the really nice detail when they have a street of these or a block of these with their gardens and everything, besides providing extra interesting terrain features, it, it really adds a lot to the look. Uh, these actually all come uh, with the full three walls. You're going to notice as I show you these that many of mine have only two and that's because when I put them together I think they look better. Here's one with four, but I think they look better when they match up when they only have one instead of a double wall. Um, and for some of them I have the wall pieces, the extra wall pieces done up so I can place them there. Because I don't always, as you may imagine, set them up the same way every time I play the game. And this is the uh, boulangerie. Look at the detail work. Can you see that? I don't know if that's going to come out on the camera here, but this just wonderful little models. Very, very beautiful, go together well. The limited interiors would reduce their ability for a very small scale type skirmish game, uh, games where you're only using you know, two, or two to six figures aside, but they're perfect for games like Chain of Command, where you're going to be dealing with a whole squad. Uh, there are the interior walls. It's nice to be able to put them in the buildings, but you don't really need the interior details that you might in a, a smaller scale skirmish game. Here is a, uh, an unpainted uh, shed, which I'm pretty sure is Charlie Foxtrot. Painted larger brick shed. The, this is just the normal painted kit. Here is a destroyed house. He's got a few of these out now. I only have a couple. The, the hat maker is an example of a partially done one. And this, this house is done to a similar size as one of these other buildings, so it can use the same garden. It, they don't make a garden specifically. Oh, here is the garden. Um, this is painted to match the other building that I have, but this garden is interchangeable uh, with that building or this one. But that's the reason for the paint color difference is I've made it to go with the other building. Um, these are so much fun. I really like working on these gardens. I've mentioned before that MDF looks like MDF very easily. That's part of why I do the texturing, and I've done the texturing on this building as well. Here I've also redone the roof. These are shingles I bought from War Bases, but very similar things are available for a number of companies. Um, I'm told that my friend Phalanx does them. I don't see them on his page, but... Um, uh, that would be an American source. In England, Charlie Foxtrot does them, war bases do them, and they go a long way. I, the building I just showed, the boulangerie has them as well, so does the tobacco shop. These go a long way to really improving the three-dimensional look of a building. I also, I think I stole this idea from a picture on Charlie Foxtrot's page, but down here at the bottom you'll notice uh, this brickwork, that is all paper. I have, I'll, I'll put the link um, either down below in the comment sections or if I can as a card on the video. This is a company designed for model railroaders where you can pick the color of the brick, the nationality of the brick because different nations use different standard brick sizes and the scale you want it printed into and they not only do the model railroading scales but they actually do 156. 
and then you just print them out. So this is just printed paper from an online computer company. It's completely free, and I think that really goes a long way to make a, a different looking building. This is actually one of my favorite uh, Charlie Foxtrot buildings, and it's really has more to do with the finishing I've done to it, because it would look a lot like all these other ones if I just done it in the normal white. This is their Normandy barn. Uh, I haven't done anything artificial to this one. This is all just paint, uh, and it's all just a standard kit. This, I think, is a beautiful, beautiful model. It's also a great example when we're dealing with these um, European buildings, that this, this model could be used for a lot of other things. I bought it for World War II for my Fall of France games. It could be used, obviously, post-Normandy as well. I, I think it's actually supposed to be Norman. But that would work perfectly well in a Napoleonic game as well. A lot of multifunctions for some of these buildings. Uh, as long as I'm talking about the positive, as, as I think I've made very clear, I think very, very highly of this company. I should probably, to be fair, since I complained about this with Sarisa, I should probably mention that Charlie Foxtrot is not all, his dimensions seem a little, uh, maybe I'm wrong, maybe this is just a building, but some of his older things I think look a little tiny compared to some of the newer ones. I don't think they're unusable, and in fact I do use them on the battlefield together, but that's a house, and this is clearly, I mean, look how thin that is. Um, it's, a, it's a great looking building, uh, but I think it looks a little tiny for what it is. Uh, however, it's a great example of something else. I don't know if Colin would appreciate me sharing this with you, but um, for a little extra, you can get him to customize the name rastering on here. If I had learned that earlier, I would have done that on all my buildings. Uh, I showed you a, bake a bakery called The Bakery. I think this is Cafe de Normandie originally, but I had it named for my mother, uh, Cafe de Sandrine. I think that's a, a nice feature, and it also makes your buildings look a little more real when they're not named The Bakery or The Restaurant. This is Supreme Littleness Designs, and this is a, it's actually sold as a Victorian greenhouse. Um, it was a wonderful little kit. A lot of the stuff in here either came with it or came with the war bases, uh, stuff that I showed you earlier for the uh, chain of command kits. Um, like these, I have a whole interior in here done up. And this was just a phenomenal model. I put an awful lot of work on its basing just because I think the model was so cool and had so many neat things. And unfortunately, uh, the way that this company works now is you sort of have to watch him closely. You got to friend him on Facebook because he doesn't regularly run things anymore. Instead, he'll run a short run of things and you have to grab them while they're available. But this was a marvelous kit and just such a nice little feature to have in a corner somewhere. I don't remember not only where I got these, I don't even remember having got them. They're not finished. You can see I've got that texture on here that I talked about earlier. So this is a really nice kit. There's supposed to be a door here, a gate. Um, I don't know where mine is. I'm also missing this roof. I feel bad doing a review and complimenting buildings that I don't know the maker of, but these are just so nice. I really love the the way the the brick was done as a you know to show those weak breaks in the stucco, um, and I think when once these are painted, they're going to just look absolutely beautiful. And I just forgot I had them, uh, so they've never got finished. A uh, lot of great products out there. I think any of these buildings I've shown you are perfectly usable. Um, as you can see, I'm a, a big fan of, of, of Colin's work with Charlie Foxtrot. But uh, here's some of the things to look at with some of the different manufacturers out there, and I, I, hope, uh, I hope you found that useful. And so there you have it, a quick comparison of a number of some of the more common and, and definitely some of my favorite of the MDF manufacturers for World War II European buildings. Uh, if any of you have these kits or other kits that you'd like to talk about or ask questions about, please put those in the comments down below. We also look to those comments for further ideas for content that we can bring to you here on Cry Havoc Wargaming. In fact, this series itself was presented as a suggestion by viewers like you. If you've liked this video or found it useful, please hit like. And if you'd like to continue to receive notifications for videos like this one or others that may help you determine how to better spend your time or money in your wargaming hobby, then please hit subscribe. Until next time, cheers.